What's up everybody, Destroy here. Welcome back to another cast of the Rise of the Witch King, patch 2.2 version 6. Today we'll, we're doing a 2v2v2 on a Monomarth, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Alright, let's jump in. We have our first player here, the Man's Dad. Or just Man's Dad, there's no the, I guess. Or whatever that squiggly thing is called. It's Goblins. And his ally is Fiery Bull as Elves. That's the first team. The next team we have... DJ Premier as Dwarves, and his ally is uh, King Thranduil as Elves. How fitting. And a final team, we have The Chain as Isengard, and we have his ally, Saints. as Mordor. Alright, so we got Mordor, Isengard, versus Elves, Dwarves, versus Elves, and Goblins. Interesting. Alright, cool. Of course, there's a signal fire here to fight over if they do so choose. And of course, there are outposts as well in between each base with a cave troll guarding it that they can all fight over. So it'll be interesting. I'm going to tell you right now, if I had to guess which team is going to win, I bet it would be this team. I don't know who wins. I don't know the result of the game, but this team has the chain on it. <laughs> and the chain is pretty good. So maybe they'll win, but we'll see. Maybe not. Alright, so of course Saints here going for an Orc Pit start. Very, very classic. Very good. And the chain's going for a crossbow start. There's Isengard there. Alright, cool. So Thranduil's going for Thranduil's going for Mython Sentries as his beginning unit after getting a few farms there. And his ally is Teacher Mir, of course, going for Guardians. Very nice. And let's see, Fire Reveal's going for Lorien. Archers is his first battalion, and it looks like, of course, we have Goblin Warriors from a man's dad, as you would expect. Most players do not go for anything other than Goblin Warriors, because it'd be pretty crazy. Sometimes they start with Spiderlings, though. Sometimes. Or half troll Swordsmen, even, which is a bit risky, though. You get a lot more out of a Goblin Warrior start, though, if you play it correctly, I think. Goblin Warrior starts are pretty strong, because you can just send guys all over the place. And they, of course, are very strong as well. They are carving through those orcs. I thought a horde of orcs actually beat a horde of goblins. Maybe not. Well, of course, they're not dead, so who knows. Maybe they do. Alrighty. Let's see. Dwarves have a mine there. He doesn't have a forward mine or anything, as far as I can tell. There's a builder moving out. But not, not going to forward mine. Not really a map you would go for a forward mine, to be honest. Yeah, it looks like that's all I'm in a bit of trouble with this patrol. The chain also sending some troops. Since crossbows and pikes, you should easily clean that up. And it looks like now King Thrandall and the chain will have to contest for the outpost. And was hiding his guys in the trees. Very nice. I'm waiting for the time to strike. Meanwhile, over here we have Saints engaging Man's Dad. Goblins Rush Mordor. It's just gonna be spam versus spam on this side for a while. Saints has gone for Goblin or Orc Archers, rather. Which would be pretty useful and swing things in his favor, I believe. Man's Dad definitely gonna need some Goblin Archers, I think, to uh, help out with that. Let's see what's going on over here. We have the Dwarves engaging the Elves. Interesting. Some Mithlon sentries being sent over from, of course, Fiery Bolt to try and uh, get rid of this mine. Doesn't look like they're going to succeed, though. Teacher Vermeer's got enough there, definitely. <laughs> Although, Fiery Bolt managed to capture the outpost, at least for now, with a single Orion Archer. And he'll be returning home, it looks like. Looks like the Chain and Thranduil are going face to face, head to head here. And it looks like the Chain is actually winning this engagement quite substantially. Two battalions, three battalions of crossbows, two battalions of pikes. Pretty strong force from Isengard there. And King Thrindle's going to need a lot more than that if he wants to live. Also, his builder is in a very, very dangerous situation. King Thrindle has actually rushed Mirkwoods. That could pay off, although that might not. Enough crossbows will bring them down, and these are all buffed. They will actually butcher... Nice use of the stealth, though. We also do have a keen brand here as well from DJ Premier, which will help in the defense there. 
quite a bit. And here we are, Saints against uh, Man's Dad, of course. Keep getting who the Goblin player is. <laughs> it's Man's Dad, of course. He's on four Goblin Caves now and going for a Spider Pit. Spider Pit will shut down Mordor pretty hard. If he can, uh, excuse me, if he can get it going. There's Golem as well. Golem is on the field, and if he can get him, that would be probably good. At least whoever gets the ring. Well, I guess he might might become a target by everyone. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe you don't want the ring. But perhaps you do, so the enemy does not get it, of course. But it looks like there's fighting on both sides, which is nice. Sometimes you get players being doubled by both teams, which can be <laughs> obviously not ideal for the third team being doubled. But it doesn't seem to be the case here, which is nice. It looks like Thrandall is pushing out. With the help of the dwarves, your premier, of course, has destroyed the outpost to keep the money not flowing into the pockets of uh, the chain there, which is probably the best decision he can make. Gothmog is out in the field for saints, which should help out Mordor, I believe. And Man's Dad's going for Goblin Archers, Goblin Spam still, which is pretty effective for now. Spiderlings as well. And let's see, Fiery Bull is just setting up a defensive perimeter here. He's also got this outpost. He should really build a mere Galadriel and uh, heal up that lonely battalion. You can get a full battalion out of that beast. If he heals it up, of course. And we have some Revenant Lancers as well. Which, he has a forward mine. Soon to be contested. And King Brand is there waiting. Just waiting for the time to strike. Looks like the dwarves and elves are trying to rally forth and push forward a... Uh, Against the chain was just a lot of crossbows. Also, it's alerts up to level three now. Very nice indeed. And these spiderlings are going to tear through these orcs as well, and also actually help out with these horizon lasers. Also, you should really send those spiderlings after the horizon lasers. And Gothmog, I think, is all alone here. You should probably just keep attacking him. Gothmog. It's not enough to take out an entire army, it turns out. <laughs> There's a Dwarven Builder back here. Oh no. Looks like, a, looks like the Dwarven Builder's dead. Unfortunate. DJ Vermeer has a bit of a problem now, since he's helping out Thrandall so heavily on the bottom. Oh, he was. Thrandall's doing a good job of keeping his guys stealth, though. That's pretty nice. I do approve. Stealth play of the elves, allowing his guys to uh, not take any damage. So Isengard's gonna have a bit of a difficulty with that, and now he's just eating them alive with those arrows. I think Thrandall should be fine down there. And while Saints and Man's Dad continue going at it, Cap does manage to escape a certain death, but there will be spiderlings on his tail soon. Now DJ Premier is pushing in against Fiery Bull here. Interesting. And the spiderlings seem to be kind of slaughtering. Wow. Well, if you, in case you're wondering, a battalion of spiderlings can actually destroy <laughs> a battalion of Farage Moisers. Holy crap. I knew they were good against Cav, but not like full on against Cav. I guess against stronger cab like or hero or something if they're not as effective obviously, but still, they can one v one some some teams. I guess these are level two. He's in the venom sacks though. That'd be a big upgrade for that as well. Saints about to lose a builder here. And down goes the builder. Rip. Saints is going for trolls, drummer troll. He's got Harajan Laser or Harajan Paws level two, of course, three orc pits he's running off of there. Now he's to fight off towards the spiderlings and goblin archers and goblin warriors. It's gonna be a bit tough over there. And the chain is actually having a tough time over here, it looks like. Or maybe he isn't. The chain going for siege. I think he's gonna break out some ballista there. Which is probably the correct call against elves, I guess. What else can you do, huh? Your rangers, your archers rather, can't uh, <laughs> defeat his archers, obviously. So maybe that's your only bet. We do have a Haldir here from King Thrandall. And continue to get some Merkwood archers. 
Mithalan sentries. Now he's going to claim that outpost as well. That'll be good for them. Actually, I think if DJ Premier actually can hold against Fiery Bull well enough, then maybe that, that team will win, King Thrandal and DJ Premier. Seeing how well King Thrandal's doing. And actually, DJ Premier's doing pretty well also. These Metal Dale are butchering these Lorian archers with the help of Brand. Still no one training their archers. He's got a battalion of archers right there. <laughs> Train our archers, man. Oh, kill me. Of course, I always forget to do it myself. But occasionally, I remember to give my unit experience. But, I mean, if your guys aren't level 2 already, which these are, but the higher level they are, the stronger they are, of course. But they'll get their black arrows at level 2 if you level up straight away. Or you get their long shots or whatever if they're a different faction. It's good stuff. And then we do have Ballista, of course, out here from the chain. We'll see if that makes a big difference against the elves. These stealthing elven bastards. How good are they? Actually, not very good, turns out. Caldir's been cripple struck. He'll be staying there for a moment. Cross was doing as much damage as humanly possible. And Lurch's going in for the kill against Haldir. Holy crap. Haldir's dropping like a sack of potatoes. Unfortunate. The chain definitely made a good call there. Now, if he can get away, that'd be good, but I think he's going to get killed by Mirkwoods. Oh, he just barely gets away. Lucky, lucky. And I think King Thrandall's army is going to start disappearing here rapidly. As these guys aren't super tanky. Even at level 5, they still, they still die fairly good. So, perhaps King Thrandall might want to do a tactical retreat. Also, he is fighting in front of the Uruk Pits, which can be a bit problematic for him, as you might expect. Ooh, we have Ents out here from Fiery Bull. Although he is up against DJ Premier, who has a very forward base. Fiery Bull placing a beacon showing there's an army there. And that perhaps his ally should help out. Yeah, it looks like Man's Dad is sending an army to aid. While King Thrun, uh, not King Thrun, well, King, uh, <laughs> King Saints. While Saints uh, builds up his army here. He's also got a level 3 troll cage, so he can go for attack trolls. Be pretty savage. Could also go for Harage Marchers or something, if you want to, but he's going for Orc Archers and just Orc Warriors for now. And Harajim Lances. And it looks like the Goblins and Elves are going to try and push out the Dwarves here. Will it be effective enough? Will it be enough? We do have an Azog there. Azog, of course, when he's his great battle rage, is very strong against heroes, but he's being burst down by Men of Bale with a leadership buff. The statues. Very well placed statues, making it very difficult, I'd imagine, to get rid of them. And Galoian, of course, is there as well, doing a massive amounts of damage. Dwarven armies, once they get in position, can be very hard to get rid of. So, they're going to have a bit of trouble on their hands. The eternal struggle between Isengard and the Elves continues. The chain has taken the outpost back from King Thrandall, though. And King Thrandall building a fort. More forward barracks here, as well as a few defensive structures and healing structures. I say a few loosely, as there is only one, but still, you know what I mean. <laughs> we have an attack troll who doesn't have a weapon. What's up with that? Oh, there it is. When he was running over there, he wasn't holding anything. You guys saw that. Surely. I'm not hallucinating, right? I'm okay. Yeah. But the attack troll is doing work. It's getting burst down pretty quickly, though. Attack trolls are not cheap. So if a couple of battalions of Groff and Largers can kill it, that would be a good pickup for him. But he has uh, has done work, it <laughs> turns out. It is continuing to do work now that there's no Goblin Archers focusing it down. But those, that battalion should finish it off, or Azog, rather. Yep, there it goes. Definitely effective. Only thing more effective than that would be a Muma kill. Which perhaps they'll go for later, who knows. Uh, the chain is going to try and break the defensive formation of King Thrandall here. He's also got King Thrandall. Mr. Fabulous himself is going to die rapidly to the berserk of Lurts, who gives no shits about your heroes. And he manages to get him out of there as well. Good thing is, Lurts tanked a lot of those Mirkwood arrows, allowing his crossbows to pick up a lot of kills in the meantime. 
but I think uh, now that oh, let's actually die to hobbits. Embarrassing. It looks like Thrandall has actually cleaned up that army pretty nicely, even with the under the effect of Creebine. Now Men's Dad has an attack from Saints once again. Is this taking target of enemy trolls? Does that work on half trolls? Probably not. That'd be that'd be pretty cheeky, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't work. It does work on hill trolls and snow trolls, though, from Engmar. The trolls of the north, as they are actually trolls. Half trolls, though, probably not. As they're only half troll, I guess. So, yeah, Thranduil has taken the outpost. Very nice, and he is now pushing forward. Oh, we have a Saruman from the chain. How interesting. I wouldn't send Saruman in by himself, though. The, oh, there we go. Let's go for the Wildman Summon. Trying to get his Saruman into position. Just waiting for the, the mighty Wizard Blast. Oh, <laughs> King Thrandall knows. At least he got one medallion. He didn't quite level up to two, though, sadly. Once he gets two, of course, we get the fireball, and he'll have another spell to use. As I continue to wreck these trolls. And the goblins seem to be defending well enough. <laughs> Tom Bombardil's on the field, of course. Apparently I'm observing somebody. I don't know how that happens. I say that every time, but... Somehow. Some way I observe someone every time without even pressing this button. <laughs> Maybe it's... I don't know. Who knows? The chain is pushing forward once again, but this time he has Saruman. I think with the addition of Saruman, the elves are going to have a bit of trouble there, especially once he levels up. And if somehow, some way, this game goes long enough for Saruman getting level 10, rip everybody, because Saruman level 10's power is so savage. Permanently gain control of target enemies. It takes control of like a circle like this. If you cast it on an entire army of Mirkwoods, Thrandall's doomed. <laughs> so. Let's hope that doesn't happen for Thrandall's sake. But that usually takes a very long time to get. Level 10 Saruman does not happen lightly. One does not just level 10 Saruman. Same with Gorkill. He takes a long time to level up to them. But once he gets a call from the deep, summoning three fire drakes, pretty beastly. It's on par with Army of the Dead, I feel. It's kind of like stuff like that from Aragorn. Gorkill is leveling up nicely as well. You can hear the black orcs just rapidly dying. Their death sound is so intense. <laughs> we do, of course, have a fell beast here. Is this is Kamul. Yeah, Kamul, the Easter Lady, the cool one. Although I like Morgamir too, let's be honest. I named my Skyrim character for Morgamir, <laughs> so I guess I would. But yes, the chain is firmly in control here, I think, right here. Saruman's up to level 3 now, and the elves are definitely going to have trouble with the old Saruman, I feel. I'm interested to, see, interested to see who will win between goblins and Mordor, though. It looks like the war between DJ Premier and... Oh. <laughs> Fiery Bull is uh, over. As uh, Dietrich Mir snuck a demolisher in there and destroyed his base. Well, maybe he didn't sneak it, but he got a he got a demolisher in there and destroyed the base of Party Bowl without me uh, paying any attention to that. Whoops! Of course, these make amazing cavalry as well as you see here. If you just walk them over enemies, they die so easily. Demolishers are a bit uh, a bit OP. There's no other way to say it. They are a bit OP. But, yes. Looks like Thrindle's still alive here. So is uh, Haldir. Not the actual Thrindle. King Thrindle's Haldir is still alive here. His Mercwords are dropping like flies, though. I'd say, actually, the chain is doing well against uh, this. Although... The positioning could be a little better, I think. From, I mean, he has a forward wall of guys to hide behind, but his Mirkwoods are not, <laughs> not actually behind the, the dwarves. As they should be, maybe. Also being absolutely bombarded by these ballistas. With the addition of more ballistas. One ballista may not be very effective, 
Many blisses though. Look how many blisses shots it takes to bring them down a little bit. It's kind of sad actually. Blisses I feel are underpowered cat uh, underpowered catapults. They're not very good. They're not good against units. They're not good against buildings even really. I mean they're all right, but they're the worst catapults I feel in the game currently. They could do with an upgrade or a buff or something I think. Buff to their damage. Oh, who knows? They've always been a bit trash, I feel. Oh dear. That wildman summon is going to hurt. Trapping all the Mirkwoods in there. Oh god. Lurch is over there as well, giving leadership. He is also paralyzed, how dare. Cripple struck, rather. Although opting. Not to uh, stay there and engage until everything is dead. He doesn't have his carnage yet. Now he does. Could carnage down Haldir if he chose to. He's opting not to do that and just take the <laughs> take the outpost instead. But he just knocked down. <laughs> I don't know if you want to knock it down first before you take it, but that's fine. Works. Look at all these men of Dale. Oh, that was an ill-timed. Arrow volley and worm combo. Man said summoning the worm, but somebody using arrow volley on him. Is it Saints? Must have been Saints. I think he's the only one with arrow volley, isn't he? Let's take a look at powers here. Over. I'm just curious. Hang on. Where's that undermine? You gotta watch out for sneaky undermines. You could, uh. Okay, it's not sneaky. That was a defensive undermine. Taking out the ballistas, it looks like. King Thrandall, the elven player here, who's on the defensive right now, has himself summon Ents. Elven Wood, heal, rally call, 7 power points, and a very small 160 of 710 command point limits. Right now. So he doesn't have much in the way of troops, but he's working on it, of course, while his barracks is being ballisted down. Man's dad, the goblin player on top left, has himself Worm, of course, we saw. Spiderling allies, Wildman Dunlin, Scavenger, okay, bets that, 15 power points, that. War chance, 15 power points through 12, 475. His farm command point limit is pretty bad. But he is under heavy siege, so that's to be understandable. To be unexpected, I guess. Let's see, Saints, the mortal player, is just about to get Balrog, so that's pretty savage. I do remember Mordor's tree a bit, and Balrog is right after Barrage, so he's got 474 of 775. Also has Air Volley of Sauron. He'll Balrog here very shortly. Very, very shortly. Fire Fireball, of course, is just basically dead. <laughs> he's got a barracks. But nothing he has is very in the game at the moment. And the chain has himself the Watcher in Industry, Wildman Vision Palantir. Four chains. Rebind. 15 power points. Four. 546 of 875, he's doing quite well. King Dance, uh, or King, King whatever his face, sounds like he's in trouble. Watcher being summoned down on the army there. Brutal. Mad Ejimir has Barrage. I'm just waiting for that Balrog, man. There it is. <laughs> Saints of Balrog has arrived. Very nice. Should hopefully shut down a lot of, uh, Oh man, a barrage ball rod combo. What we have, Man of Dale, of course, club break, combat allies, undermine, rebuild, heal, rally call, four power points, six, 16 of 1075. Or DJ Vermeer. So we're starting to get into 25 point powers at this current moment, which is very nice indeed. I love when a game goes long enough to get 25 point powers. Balrog actually got wrecked there. With uh, Azog and these fire arrows from the fortress apparently destroying him. So he didn't get quite as much done as he'd like, I'm sure, but still nice enough, I guess. And the barrage, of course, took out the stuff in the back. Perfect. That shuts goblins' production down almost entirely. They have one goblin, or, or spider pit, rather. So all Saints has to do is just keep sending stuff, and he will overwhelm his enemy because his enemy won't have <laughs> anything on the field. Meanwhile, DJ Premier and King Thrindle is going to try and push here on the chain. There's a demolisher there. But upgraded Uruks are a bit of a, a bad thing for him to go up against, I think. 
You do take more damage when you trample over a pikeman, I believe. And upgrade Urukai. Definitely are more upgraded. Nasty. Nice. Uh, Teach me use barrage there. Destroy the army of the Jane. Very nice. Ooh, there are Deathbringers in there. Deathbringers are savage. I did hear uh, a dwarf die. Might have been Gloin. I don't know. Perhaps. But there are a couple of demolishers here just waiting to be used. And the only defense they have currently is Saints' army here, which is a couple of few trolls, a couple of attack trolls, and a drummer troll. A few black orcs. Or one black orc and a orc archer, rather. They're of course, going to have a bit of issue with that. Looks like there's a flying unit on the way. This, is, of course, is Kamul, who's a level 4. Wildman Summit in the archer line there. We should keep them busy. Thrandal stealthing his elves. This ability comes in handy, really. Use that elven cloak. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Look at that. He's standing in the midst of the army. It's too bad Mordor doesn't have his eye, does it? Or else he'd be able to find them easily. They will, of course, break out of stealth eventually. And be killed off. And there they go. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Who's that watcher? I haven't the slightest idea where that watcher is. Uh. Uh huh. I heard a watcher, but I don't see no watcher. Weird. Ooh, shit, cheeky. Easy from here's going in for a possible kill on the goblins. That could be bad. Could be bad news indeed. Do they have armor upgrades? Mm -hmm. I think so. This probably needs to go, actually. Why is this a thing on this? Now that I think about it, demolishers don't really need an armor buff. So why would you allow them to purchase them for mail? <laughs> They're already hard enough to kill, especially when they get deployed. Maybe that would be the buff that, or the, the nerf. Decrease in deploy armor, which is what they plan on doing. And maybe get rid of that upgrade, if they can. I don't know. That's just a thought. But anyway, looks like the chain has got a pretty strong force there. He's got Deathbringers, Wildmen, Pikemen, he's got all kinds of stuff. Throne and Deja Vermeer, though, of course, have an army as well. We've got King Dane out here. If he gets to level 8, of course, he can summon the Royal Guard, which is pretty beastly. And we, of course, have King Brand, level 10. Nice Undermine. That'll give him time to clean up a lot of army. Let's see here, Dragon Strike. Is that over here? And it is indeed. The base of King Thrandwell is nowhere near dead either. Where's it going? Surely he didn't cast it on the army. That would be a terrible decision. I say that, but actually, actually worked. <laughs> huh? I would have. That's risky. They could have easily moved, and that wouldn't have hit anything. But it looked like it actually worked out. The army of Deidre Vermeer and King Thunder didn't move. And it got burned. All the Thrandall's army is over here. Stealthed. And these damn trees in the mist. Ah, oh, Saruman falls. No. Sad day indeed. We have Black Riders out here for Saints as well as Trolls and stuff. We have a level 5 Goblin King for his dad who's still putting up a hell of a defense here. So all his buildings are rebuilt. Except for his fissure, I guess. And stuff. We do have summon Ents, which of course would be from the elves, so that'd be against the chain. Club break as well on the army here. And going to get close and do his little slam. You could also Oh shit, Glenn's almost level 10. Savage. If Glenn gets level 10, that shatter hammer is going to shut Isengard down. That would be hardcore. So let's hope he gets to level 10. Black Riders being sent by Saints though to help. Will it be enough? He's also sent catapult support, which will definitely help against Ents. Ballistas are trash against Ents. Because they don't have fire, but Mordor's catapults, of course, are absolutely destructive against Ents. Hopefully he's targeting. He's, he needs to target this Ent down quickly. Also, if Glenn just runs in there, he can actually shake foundation like this Urk bit. That'll probably be a good call. He just, I just want to see his shatter hammer. It needs to happen. I feel like it would be a waste of a... <laughs> a waste if it didn't happen. There he goes, level 10. 
Oh yeah. Sadly, there's not really much to use it on. The chain's throwing down an emergency. Oh no, I thought he was throwing down a wall. He's not indeed. Watch her there. Ooh. Taking a few elven lives. Although the dwarven army of the DJ Premier is over here going up against saints a little bit. It's going to be a bit tough. What saints to deal with? There is a lot of, lots of nasty dwarves and men of Dale there. Gimli and Gloin just kicking ass, taking names. Once Gloin, of course, or Gimli rather, gets level 5, he will, of course, get Slayer and become a savage beast. We don't have a slam. I'm just waiting for the slam earthquake, shatter hammer thing to happen, but there's not really much to use it on, is there? Fireball placing a beacon here. Unprotected dwarven builder. There's also a maybe Ford Siege Works with a demolish house in front, which is probably a bit worrying. But man's dad's still, uh, still in it. It looks like the army of DJ Vermeer has been pretty much taken out. Looks like Dwarven heroes are retreating. Gloin actually was slaughtered by Lurts, it looks like. I wonder if he tried to use a Shatter Hammer. I think that would knock away Lurts, at least. But who knows. He might have died too rapidly. Only time will tell. And by that saying doesn't really work, because no one will never know. <laughs> Unless we go back and watch the replay, of course, again. And I'm going to be frank with you. It's not going to happen. Once is enough. Let's look at the economies here. And we'll take a look at... Bring me an army. Top tier powers. Of course, Saints has a... Not a ton of money, but he's spending it, of course. He's also going for Mumix and Trolls and stuff. Very good. Of course, he got Balrog on Recharge. The change, of course, is Dragon Strike. And not a ton of money either. So they're spending their money as they should be. We should be sitting on like 20k. Not in a situation like this. So it's good to see they are not. DJ Mirror does have Earthquake ready. So that could be a bit of a problem for somebody. Where did Undermine happen? <laughs> Rise up! That must have been the new Undermine, perhaps. Allowing his heroes to come out against uh, Man's Dad up there in the north, perhaps. Thrandos doesn't have a 25 point power yet. That's unfortunate for him. Oh, Saruman. Saruman is level 5, almost level 6. We do have Watcher be uh, Watcher and Worm ready for Man's Dad, of course. Nobody's sitting on a ton of money, which is good. 2k is about the most anyone has at the moment, which is pretty reasonable. There's lots of things you can save up for. Barrage going down on King Thrandos' army, destroying it pretty much. Only a few stragglers remain, and they will be cleaned up by the army of Isengard. We could really do with fire arrows, I think. If he gets the fire arrow upgrades, he is slowly upgrading these guys. Does he have fire arrow upgrades? Nah, he doesn't actually have a level 3 armor. That would be pretty effective against elves, though. The fire arrows do help out quite a bit. Ah, oh, these Reapers army got crushed by the Watcher. Very nice. There's still a demolisher here with a ton of phalanx and some other dudes. Let's see if they manage to make it there. Oh my god, look at all these goblin archers. Goblin scum. <laughs> Sorry, when he's a fireball on Haldir's ass there. Very nice indeed. Cloudbreak is shutting in Isengard's army though. Oh dear. Dwarves using barrage on the army rising up once again. That should should set him up to be able to defend. I think there's also a vigilant int expansion there. Not something you see every day, but they are. They can be pretty effective. I like them myself, but I like floodgate expansions personally and mind launcher expansions. <laughs> Floodgates and mind launchers are the, like, the best things ever. Oh man. Oh, look at that. Ooh, he just killed a lot of Goblin Archers with that thing. Gorkiel, of course, is a good counter for this. Heroes in general are a good counter for Demolishers. Down it goes. Late game, a Demolisher isn't as OP as a, like, a Demolisher Rush. 
you do have you can stop it pretty easily but you just got to be able to have what it takes to stop it I guess looks like darkness is affecting this bottom left team here Saints and the chain of course as they have that little flashy effect under their feet some, like some of the little fire under their asses literally maybe Cobalt's back out level six still Lurch is probably level 10, I'd imagine. Just about. And Saruman is level 6. He does have his Thunderbolt Savage. I love Thunderbolt. Saruman is the funnest hero to use in this game, in my opinion. I guess him and Gandalf, because they're wizards. Both both have just really cool powers. But I think Saruman's power set's a little cooler, personally, than Gandalf's. Aside from Word of Power. Word of Power is freaking incredible. But, rarely get to have that happen. But if I had to choose between Lightning Sword and Fireball, I'm going to go Lightning Sword. Or not Lightning Sword, Fireball every time. I don't like Lightning Sword, personally. And then there's Thunderbolts versus Asari Lights. I like Thunderbolt myself, but Asari Lights better against single targets. It's, just, it's different. But very, both are very good. Anyway, we have King Thrando pushing up against Saints here. Lots of Black Orcs dying in rapid succession. It looks like the army of Man's Dead is pushing out into the center here. They're becoming bold. And of course, Man's Dead has actually taken over the north here as well. We do have a Balrog somewhere. There it is. Very nice. Saints has summoned a Balrog and he's sending his army in behind it. Which is exactly what you want to do. Fire whipping a, bata a couple of Mithlons probably not the best thing you want to do. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Balrog will die fairly quickly though. He needs to hurry up and do something. Maybe breathe fire. Oh, it could be brutal. At least he got the Merkwoods, eh? I guess. He also got a tree there, which is nice. And he also gets a swing right before dying. Nice. I should allow Saints' army to just swoop in for the kill here. And if the chain has one, which he does, I can bring that in as well. Although DJ Premier is engaging him up here. We've got Dwarven Zealots. Ooh, Saruman taking care of those with his mighty Thunderbolts. Savage. DJ Premier should be able to hold back the hordes of Mordor and Isengard up here. But Saints is doing the damage to King Thrandall. He's got Attack Trolls and Mumik over here, as well as a lot of Black Orcs. And it looks like the Attack Troll is taking out the fort, and not a whole lot is actually doing damage to him. Gothmog's there as well as Kabul. And this fort is definitely toast. That is the attack they needed to get rid of one of them. And down goes the fort of King Thranduil. For forever passes into legend. <laughs> Unfortunate for him. Does he have anything in DJ Premier's area? No, he does not. So once his base is, his barracks is gone, he is out of the game. As far as I can tell. And that should happen very shortly. Looks like the Chain's army is over here as well, still. And then it would be Saints and the Chain versus, basically, Man's Dad. As of the Elves. The Elves do have a new fort, though. So, Fiery Bull is not out of the game, but... He still isn't really... He doesn't have an army. <laughs> so... I don't foresee him winning the match, I think. Do we have a Drogoth? Oh, we do have a Drogoth, nice. I missed that somehow. I mean, Thrandall has been defeated. There you go. Snadiji Premier stands alone against vast amounts of enemies. He does have Jordan Merchants though. I like to have Jordan Merchants look. It's very nice, isn't it? It's a very nice power. That nice effect. I just like that blue glow. I don't know. Alright, well, I'd say uh, the original team I put my money on. My metaphorical money, of course. Is a is it metaphorical? Is that the right one? <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the right word. It's not really a metaphor, is it? Uh, imaginary money, I guess, would be the right word. On this team here, I think they're still going to win. But I think uh, I think the chain sealed the deal there. Not the chain, uh, Saints there sealed the deal against them with that brutal attack against King Thrandall. And that's brutal Dragon Strike managed to take out 
pretty much the majority of Yi Shimir's stuff, as well as a lot of his army. Now his Hall of Warriors will fall here as well. And all that remains is the Dwarven Fort, which does have oil casks, but I don't think it'll be enough. Of course, there's a couple of ballistas here. <laughs> Obviously shut that down pretty quickly. So they should be able to finish off DJ Premier here fairly easily, especially with troll support, which is actually being burst down pretty nicely. You always want to try and target them with trolls if you can. Ooh, nice fires of doom being cast down on the fortress of DJ Premier. It looks like the ground isn't flammable here. Because usually it leaves like a fire. It didn't actually do that. A lot of maps don't aren't flammable. They don't have the flammability. Which is being addressed, actually, for the next version of the patch. Hopefully. Uh, at least that's what I read recently. That was, uh, of course, his Shatterhammer from the board. Right? I saw. Balrog and Watcher being summoned in. Is this, uh, Man's Dad finally has a Balrog? Nice. Look at all them mountain giants. Holy crap. Man's Dad was going for the kill. And he ain't done yet. He's got Drogoth, he's got Balrog, and he's got a lot of giants. The giants, of course, probably won't die to this Watcher. He just needs to get them around it. So they take very little damage from the Watcher. And I don't... Mm, Saints might be in a lot of trouble here. Oh. Will Drogoth get hit by lightning? That would be most curious. That is way too many giants for him to contend with. I think Saints is going to get knocked. Or at least have his base destroyed. Of course, his army is not at home either. Whatever he has left of it. They actually have to pull back, leaving DJ Premier alive. This is emergency time. His fort has fallen. And the rest of his buildings are actually falling rapidly as well. Very nice attack. Never leave a player just building up. <laughs> this kind of thing could happen. Saints, of course, is not knocked out of the game. He has an orchid over here, but he's basically knocked out of the game now. When you're down to one unit, he still has his heroes. If that was a good attack by Man's Dad, definitely. Oh man, if only he knew where the the builder was. He could get there in time. Man's Dad could finish off Saints. That'd be pretty brutal. I would love to see Man's Dad win this against the chain. I'd say that would be a well-deserved win, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Perhaps. When we kill, of course, don't swing at heroes. You should just walk. As he just walk over heroes and kill them. Kothmog, of course, should be using Fury as well when going up against another hero. Watch has been summoned in. Oof, looks like the bulk of Isengard's army managed to avoid Watcher, which is good. Good for him. If DJ Vermeer can come back, that would be incredible. It's going to be tough, but he does have the potential to do so. He's of course got a level 10 brand, he's got a level 7 King Dane, which is just about level 8, so he can almost summon the army. And he's got a level 6 Gimli who has a Slayer move. He could potentially do some serious damage. We do have a level 2, two Worm Tongue. It actually pays to level up Worm Tongue, I feel. Which if you can get a Corrode of Allegiance, that's pretty savage. It's only temporary, but if you can temporarily gain control of Gimli, or temporarily gain control of King Dane and use his abilities, kill off the army, pretty beast mode. And we do have some elves on the field now, finally. <laughs> That's the first thing I've seen of fiery bulls in a while. He's probably not got a lot of economy, I'd imagine. Although his ally is a uh, goblins. Could send him some money. Uh, Men's dad is this guy who is sitting on a lot of money. <laughs> he could just probably send a little bit to his ally. Just saying. Unless he's saving up for Drogoth again, which is a possibility. But he is trying to spam out Mountain Giant so we can take down, uh, of course, Isengard. But the problem is, he doesn't have any counter to these flying units. I guess he has these Merkwoods here. We actually, are going to bring down Saints. There's Morgamir there. So that actually might be enough. Half troll marauders with a army of uh, Merkwoods. Keep on to say Mithlons. <laughs> that could be enough. The mountain giants will die, but at what cost? Saints has lost his heroes, his flying support, and he, of course he can't get those back yet. Well, he could start now, but I don't think he's rich. 
No, uh, he, he could get him back, but he has five grand. We'll see what he wants to do with that. He's gonna go for Mumix, it looks like. But, uh, yeah. I think Man's Dad could still win this game if he if he's crafty enough. Also, as could uh, DJ Premier. It's kind of all to play for at this point. Each, each side is kind of even, I'd say, almost. These two players are still alive, though, which is good. These two players are still alive, and I think that immediately puts uh, DJ Premier to the disadvantage here, as he is all alone. Thirdle has been knocked out of the game. But, I wouldn't discount him for that. They are dwarves. They are resilient, and demolishers are still OP. <laughs> so we'll see how that works. As are his heroes. His heroes are very strong. All he has to do is defend this demolisher and let it do its thing. He could easily, say, take out Saints' new fortress or something. If he so desired. The fortress power lightning strike has been used already, so... There won't be anything attacking the Demolisher. Where's he going? No. <laughs> I don't want to send your whole army after that. He's got some Men of Dale fully upgraded. Very nice. Men of Dale fully upgraded is actually very strong. The Mithril Mail makes a big difference. They're pretty resilient. Of course, the Fire Arrows make them for good killing. Oh, the Moon Kill Pen's going to fall rapidly. Unless he wants to go straight for the base, which it looks like he does want to, but he's stuck. <laughs> That demolisher pathfinding, though. Is he gonna deploy? Yes, he is. And that is GG for Saints. <laughs> Maybe. He might go build another orc pit. Looks like he's going to. But of course, there is another army barreling down upon the chain here. The armies are split. What just happened here? Shatterhammer, no doubt. Absolutely destroying the chain's army. Oh, damn. And of course, Glenn still has his shake foundation as well. It looks like the chain and uh, Saints are gonna fall here. Crazy. Look at all these mountain giants. They should be a little bit closer to these mountain giants, I think, if they want to defend them. But I think there's just enough. There's more than enough there. These ballistas on the fort are not gonna be enough to take them down. Well, actually, they're doing pretty well. I think this one's out of range of the ballista, though. And the ballistas are gone now. These two giants should be able to finish this fort off of the chain, and that will probably be an official GG. Saints' fortress is now gone, rebuilding over here. And his only other remaining builder is right there. And the chain, of course, has his remaining builder here. I think that might be it. We also have a fire trick. Man's dad. I think Man's dad actually might win this game. It's going to be Man's dad basically versus uh, DJ Premier, I think, for the end. Actually, Man's dad and. Fiery Bull, excuse me. I keep forgetting Fiery Bulls in the game. <laughs> there are Merkwoods right here. So, yeah. I think with the Elves and Goblins, might be able to win this if they're lucky. Should be quite cheeky, I think. Quite, quite nice. But they do have to fight a fully armed dwarf with a level 10 hero that can just destroy his army pretty much instantaneously. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I think DJ Premier still has what it takes to be able to win this game. He's a pretty decent player, so we'll, uh, we'll see. This Demolisher probably should have been moving, though. A wasted Demolisher. Could have went for that. Alas. He's got a, he's got another other thing going on, I guess. Hopefully this worm dies. This time's almost out. Oh, shit, we have a Summon Dragon from Man's Dad. Gonna do a little damage against the dwarves there. Well, the goblins clean up the rest of the base. Very nice. Well, they're just desperately trying to defend here. There's a fire break here as well, just gonna get brutalized. Nope, maybe not. Ooh. Level 3 Uruk pits falling rapidly. It's not good. Oh my god, look at this. The giants, half trolls, and Mirkwood spam. It's real. That's what he needs, though. That is a good army. Good, solid, destructive army. And it looks like over here we do have DJ Premier going for an attack. Watcher being summoned in, though. To try and take them out. Level 5 Phalanxes. They've been alive for a while, apparently. I think they're going to die here against this Watcher. As they are keep, keep running back into it. 
Well, the washer's doing him a favor, <laughs> pushing him away, saving their life. Perhaps they'll stay out of range and start regenerating there. I think this is going to be it for Saints. Saints has been defeated. And the chain is going to fall out right afterwards, I think, here. I think all he has is these two things. And the goblin hordes are massive. Although his giant shouldn't be throwing rocks at worm tongue. <laughs> That's not a good idea. He's gonna end up hitting a lot of his own troops. Oh, uh, you no. You gotta watch out for that. Luckily it doesn't actually kill enough. What is he doing? Why would you not finish off the chain? Okay. Well, he's opting not to finish off the chain, just go straight for uh straight for the dwarven base, I guess. Which is fair enough. I guess the dwarves are really the only threat. Dwarven citadels popped up. <laughs> Popped up right from his base, looks like he did. Mighty catapult over there, perhaps. Yes, he did indeed. There's a fully armed dwarven army in front as well. This is actually the summoned army from King Dane. The Royal Guard. Or summoned three battalions of level five fully upgraded dwarven warriors, dwarven phalanxes, and dwarven exors. Pretty cool. Will it be enough though? I'm not so sure. And there is an army of Markwoods here as well. Which will definitely help, as he does have Silverthorns, and they should help defend it quite nicely. Bursting down King in there. Just a bit. He's not taking a ton of damage, though. And it looks like we do have an army going for the base. We also have a Balrog over here as well. Oh boy. Yeah, as I can say, he should really use this Balrog to just destroy everything. The, the mountain giants will just be able to clean up here. And I think that'll be will be it for the DJ Premier. Perhaps. Oh my god. What a way to go out though. And there's the darkness. Encountered by Cloudbreak of DJ Premier though. Thankfully he has that. Goblins in darkness probably wouldn't be good for his health, I'd imagine. Looks like he did manage to take out all the siege though. Balrog is the only thing remaining over here. And of course it's going to shut him down a bit. But he just fire whipped the fort. <laughs> that, was, that was a waste of a fire whip. Never fire whip the fortress. Unless it's about to die. It doesn't do jack. Threndul is on the field. King Threndul, the hero, not the person of course. That should help out I think. If he can level him up he will take out the dwarven heroes nicely. I'd say Fiery Bull's actually done a good, uh, good idea here, going full on Mirkwoods. That's, he's bringing what the goblins don't have, which is good range support. Goblins got the melee troops under control and the siege, so if elves just go full on archers, seems pretty legit to me. Lynn does have Shatter Hammer though. He probably could have got in there and used it actually. Oh, he's trying to lure him in. I think, uh, I think Fiery Bill realizes. Oh shit. The Undermine being used. Is he gonna get it? No. He's gonna try. He might hit this one. Actually, he has a farther range than I thought. <laughs> Didn't kill many of them, though, sadly. Now, DJ Premier's Fortress is under siege once again. So it looks like he will defend once again as well. And is. Ah, okay. It looks like uh, the chain has been defeated as well, so he's out of the game. Fireball is now expanding to the south, which is a good idea. The top team is definitely free to move south with ease, with impu impunity. Most of the dwarves are push pushing this way. But as long as they keep pressure on his base, I don't think he will have much choice but to defend. As there are giants constantly being thrown at his base with half-tour marauders. He should really upgrade these half-tour marauders. Man's deck could definitely do with some half drum marauder upgrades. They're pretty savage once they get upgraded, especially with the Forge Blades. They do a lot of damage. So, I don't know why he's not going to do that. But, oh well. I think at this point in the game, he really should have upgrades. Why would you not? I guess I guess because he's spamming mountain giants. <laughs> Maybe. They're not cheap. They are a thousand apiece. This is, the this is the downside of having an archer-only army, though. As you see, they're not very effective against buildings. It's taking a very long time 
Also, he doesn't actually have to stand this close to uh, do the siege works with an axe tower. With the archers, the most range in the game, aside from from uh, no lores. But that's fine. <laughs> Never mind that. Tom Bombadil being summoned in here, kicking some ass. Like inspired bulls, Tom Bombadil. He's dancing his way to victory. Look at all these giants. I guess that's his option. Just spam mountain giants and half door mirage without upgrades and hope it works. He just did just kill a lot of his own men though. He's not the best. Targeting heroes with siege weapons is just generally not a good idea. Because when the hero moves, you end up hitting your army a lot. Which is not the best. Just mountain giant spam is real though. He just needs a. Uh, he just needs to get him to the base. Did you remember fort is fully, fully functional, fully healed up again, basically. He doesn't have mighty catapult yet though, which is interesting. Sp Spiraling's being summoned in. Well, they'll actually get the men veil at the very least, which is probably worth it. And it looks like he'll be pushing it this way. Oh, the royal guard has been summoned in, and now they got to run for their lives. King Thrandal looks like he died there, though. Unfortunate loss for a fiery bull. Earthquakes being used on the mountain giants. Actually not very effective against mountain giants, turns out. They are very much alive and kicking. The men of Dale, on the other hand, are fairly effective against mountain giants. And that should deal with that pretty nicely. And that is, what, six? Five, six mountain giants dead? Very quickly. He really needs to stop sending him in alone. Because the dwarves do have a defense, they will take him out. He needs to go for like a, a sneak attack, send some guys in the south here. Like, send an army of half trolls and some giants this way, send an army of half trolls and giants this way. He'll be forced to split his forces. And then you'll have a better chance of taking him forward, I think, than grouping up all the mountain giants in one spot and having them all die at once. They're a bit too expensive to group all at once, I feel. Ooh, King Brand, very close to death. He's also fairly effective against mountain giants with his uh, Beast Slayer arrow, since I believe their mountain giants are considered monsters. Probably. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah, definitely. Uh, I think they could actually do with some Ents as well. I think Fiery Bull should really make some Ents. That would help out. If they lose this game, though. I swear. <laughs> they had such potential to win. He's making big mistakes with his mountain giants. Allowing DJ Premier to kind of rally. Last thing he wants is rallying DJ Premier. Especially with his leveled up heroes. Gimli's up to level 8 now. Absolute savage. There's a dragon here. Should help out. It's going to be a hard fought battle for whoever does win. Just put it that way. I still think uh, think Man's Dad will pull out the victory. But it's going to take some time. Man's Dad and Fiery Bull, that is, of course. <laughs> As I'm chasing Gimli. A sad day. A sad sight to see. Just a lone little totem here. I remember these stupid totems used to keep you in the game. <laughs> it's so broken back in the day. People put them off the map, and then you'd never be able to die as goblins. It was pretty annoying. But, thankfully that has been fixed. Well, ages ago, I'd imagine. Oh, I was gonna say, why would he be using that on his own guy? I didn't see Gimli. Oh man, Azog's going for the kill. Now that Gimli doesn't have Slayer, I think Azog's poised to kill him. Although Hobbit Summon will change that. You don't want to fight those Silverthorn rocks, not as a hero. You go from zero to hero. <laughs> hero to zero. Isn't that a quote from like some Disney movie or something? I forget. Ugh, sounds familiar though, but I'm old. Who knows? Oh, shit. King Dane's gonna summon his Royal Guard before he falls. Good call. And now the his army is being targeted instead of him. A saving grace. <laughs> These used to give insane amounts of power points to whoever killed them. 
pretty sure they don't give any power points now. Which is a good change. Because why would you want to use your power if it's just going to give your enemy, like, level 25 power points? You wouldn't, obviously. And that's how it used to be. So luckily that's not a, fact a factor anymore. Looks like, uh, looks like the army's dead here. Bran running away once again. <laughs> this is a bit of a stalemate, isn't it? Although the elves taking over the entirety of the bottom of the map. So he should be bringing Ents himself, I feel. Fiery Bull really needs to start spamming Ents and make, like, an attack. I think if Fiery Bull was properly making the right kind of stuff, they'd be able to take out DJ from here pretty easily. It's not like he doesn't have an economy now. <laughs> he does. But he has no Ents. Jesus. Balrog once again here. Trying to stop the army of DJ Vermeer from going in the back of his base. There's just so much archers though. Fire Drake should take care of a lot of that. So especially since they're so clumped. Oh dear. He's also just trampling them to death. A sad day for Men of Dale. Where is he going with these? <laughs> is he just trying to get vision on the elven base? No? <laughs> I haven't a clue. Alright, will this be it? Oh, I was going to say they're unopposed, but there's some men of jail something here. But they are taking time to kill it. Ah, oh, these ones are fire us. Oh, if he can get that in there. He needs this bad. I heard a citadel, I thought. Did I? Yep, yeah, there's a citadel right there. It's falling pretty fast, though, as there is a lot of mountain giants there. Rebuild being used on the Fortress of DJ from here. One mountain giant remains. And Fiery Bull finally shows up to aid his ally. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, th I think DJ from here will still fall eventually. Just a matter of time. Lancers, huh? Interesting. I guess enough lancers would shut down all these uh these guys, but really. Go with like Merkwoods and Ents. You got the game won. <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't go Merkwoods and Ents. He's got Merkwoods. Let's get some Ents. It hurts my brain to see Elven player sieging without Ents. Ents are so strong now. So I don't see why you wouldn't build a tree beard and Ents. But oh well. I guess he figures his ally has the giants under control, but let's be honest, it's not really working out. <laughs> But I guess eventually, with enough perseverance and time, your enemy will give up. There you go, DJ Vermeer has been defeated, and Fiery Bull and Man's Dad take the victory of that 2v2v2. Very nice indeed. Whew. That was a brutal one. Bit of a stalemate at the end, and some things could have been done a little bit differently to end that a little bit quicker, but eh, whatever. <laughs> they won in the end, so that's all that counts, I guess. But that was a hard-fought battle for everybody, I'd imagine. That was pretty good to watch. And I hope you guys enjoyed that as well. So I'll see you guys in the next cast of The Rise of the Witching Patch 2.2 Burden 6. See you all next time.